Edward Snowden made Time's shortlist for Person of the Year this year. In late spring and early summer, Edward Snowden, a contractor for Booz Allen Hamilton, who was working for the National Security Agency, began contacting reporters around the world saying he wanted to give them information. He basically took, as one person told me, one of everything from the deepest, darkest safe house within the NSA, describing almost everything they're doing around the world to collect information, both on regular citizens and on traditional surveillance targets. The effects of these disclosures have really been earth-shaking, both domestically and around the world. In the U.S., there's congressional reform efforts. President Obama has come up saying he wants to pursue reforms. There's resolutions of the United Nations that could actually change the way the world talks about privacy as a human right. And then there are a number of diplomatic crises that have started as a result of this. Ostensibly, allies of the United States very upset about the surveillance that's been disclosed. And finally, there is a real fear among the U.S. technology community that foreign customers will not trust them now, both because there are working relationships between the NSA and these companies, um, but also because the Snowden disclosures revealed that the NSA was also hacking into these technology companies without their knowledge. Snowden was 29 years old when he leaked this information. He's since turned 30. He's living now in Moscow. Uh, on a one-year asylum grant from the Russian government. He is someone who has thought very deeply about what he did. He thought very strategically about the information he leaked. And he has a cogent argument which has been spreading. And for that reason, I think that the mark that Snowden will leave on the world is that he is the person who has really introduced, in a popular sense, the notion that this brave new world of internet communication, which gives us so much wonderful things, can have a dark side. This is about a trend in the relationship between the governing and the government. And there is a requirement among democratic states to think about the issues that arise here and figure out what rules and regulations they want to put in place. I'm Bobby Ghosh, editor of Time International. Bashar al-Assad, the dictator of Syria, was one of the most influential people in the world in 2013. This summer, and that's why he's on the shortlist for Time Magazine's Person of the Year. 2013 is the year in which the civil war in Syria turned almost 